Hello, welcome to this video tutorial series on the Archuria Profit V based on the Profit 5 from the 1970s. Today we're talking about two separate sections, the filter section and amplifier. Let's do the filter first. So what does the filter do? Well, here we have a sawtooth sound and you can see it's got all of these nasty raspy high frequency tones. At the moment the cutoff value is set to its maximum which means that the filter isn't doing anything it's just letting all of the sound through but this is a low pass filter it's called a resonant low pass filter and what it's going to do is at a specified level and we'll deal with that in a moment because it's wrong at a specified level called the cutoff it will begin to throw away upper frequencies at the rate of 24 decibels per octave so for every octave from the cutoff point every time you double the frequency of that whatever that cutoff value is you attenuate the frequency you throw those frequencies away at the rate of 24 decibels per octave let's just hear it as i turn the cutoff knob down we throw more and more frequencies away turn it back up and they come back now then what am i talking about when i say this number's wrong check that out 800 okay so that's saying the cutoff value is currently at 800 Hertz we can prove that that's wrong by looking at resonance now this is a resonant low-pass filter that word is really important I've done a separate video on resonance in filters if you want to go and check that out I'll, I'll stick a link somewhere but the point is that at the cutoff frequency we get a spike a resonant spike in the frequency response when the resonance knob's turned all the way down, it's suppressed. The spike is suppressed and we don't hear it. And as we turn the knob up, the resonance is reintroduced into the circuit. It's a natural feature of filter circuits that this thing happens. If we turn the resonance knob up, we'll see a spike. There it is. At or around... 3.1k. 3 so that is the cutoff point of the filter. That's incontrovertible. The knob says 800, which is there or thereabouts two octaves wrong. So we go from 800 uh, up to 1600 up to 3.2. So this 800 ish hertz value is approximately two octaves below what the spectrum analyzer is telling us. The cutoff frequency is which is 3.2 so don't worry too much about that cutoff number and don't get too obsessed with it i think it's like i say two octaves wrong but the bottom line is between those two knobs we get analog filter sweeps which is just the most joyous thing that horrible sound there is called self oscillation it's another feature of analog filters Go and check my video out I, you'll get a pretty weighty explanation of what's going on there but basically the filter is generating its own sine wave its own tone independent of the oscillators um, tone and you hear it as this pretty nasty kind of sound you only get it when you turn the resonance up really high that's standard resonance being generated by the oscillator those are the two most important features of the filter and we've got them dealt with the keyboard knob this fella over here allows us to set um, key key follow or key tracking on the filter now ordinarily filters um, track their fre frequency response with a played note so as you travel up the keyboard the the, the, the range of frequencies uh, the, the, over which the filter applies and the the, the effect it has on the tone scales with the keyboard and it's because our ears are logarithmic it's a more accurate representation of how we perceive sound but you can actually disable that the the, the filter itself is based on c1 so if i play c1 uh, without any key follow on at all and then introduce key follow we don't get any change at all so c1 is the only note for which this knob has no effect at all uh, when the key follow is on for every note above c1 you'll get more high frequencies than if the key follow is turned off and eventually 
as we travel up the keyboard. When we turn keyboard uh, key follow off, I'm now playing what C5, and we're getting basically no sound at all until we reintroduce key follow, and then we hear the upper frequencies. So it it it, it alters the frequency response of the filter according to the played note. For the most part, you can kind of leave it alone, leave it in its tuned setting so that it tracks the keyboard and you'll get, when you're using it as a standard filter, um, a more appropriate response. You'll, you'll hear it operating as a filter as you would expect it to. This value here, this, this knob here, the envelope amount, we can apply a an independent filter envelope the filter has its own envelope and we can apply that envelope over the top of the current filter settings. The easiest way for you to hear it is for me to make a long attack period. I'm going to set the attack to about two seconds. Let's have a listen to what it's doing and then we'll try to figure out why. That two seconds Whatever it's doing, it's taking more than two seconds. So take with a pinch of salt these numbers that you see. But we're getting a very high cutoff value being applied somehow. And then it's being savagely curtailed. And what we're being left with, that shape there, is about, what, nine harmonics in it? What happens if we turn the envelope off completely? We've got the same shape. So one conclusion that we can come to is that after the envelope has done its thing, we're going to be back to the same situation as if we'd never applied the envelope in the first place. So that's some information. Let's stick that in a box. So what's going on over this attack phase, however long it is? Well, we're traveling from the cutoff point. When we start, we have these basic, these basic nine harmonics that we're kind of focusing on. So we start there, and then we're very quickly ramping up to like all of the frequencies, and then we're falling away again. Now I've just noticed this spike up here is because I've still got resonance set on. I'll take that away. It's not had any effect on what we've been talking about so far. That's a cleaner view. So where are all those extra frequencies coming from? The envelope amount is applying a modulation to the cutoff value over the period of the attack phase. So for this X seconds, however many it is, we start from the cutoff value and then we increase the cutoff frequency up to an amount specified by this knob here. If I turn this down, we won't get as high somewhere in the middle. Pretty much got all the way then. And there we didn't. So what happens if I set it to exactly 12 o'clock? We're not, we're not getting quite up, we're not getting quite all of the way there as if we had no cutoff at all. That's really hammering the 20k. So it's not as if we can say we just add these two knobs together. It's not that simple. These are all logarithmic knobs uh, operating over um, variable ranges. So be careful making any assumptions about what, what you can do with, with your conclusions. But we can say that the envelope amount incrementally increases the cutoff range during the attack phase. Once the attack phase is finished, we enter the decay phase. Now at the moment, we don't have one. Let's introduce one. So now, when we get to that maximum point where we're hearing all of the frequencies, the sound is going to start decaying again, and we should end up back down where we started. Going up, going up, going up, going up, going down, going down, going down. And when we settle out, there's our nine harmonics. So attack and decay, 
give you kind of basically a, like a triangle if you like a slope going up to a fixed point and then a slope coming back down to a, another fixed point the fixed point at the end of that journey by the time the decay phase is finished is the sustain level so the reason why once the attack and decay is done with its work the reason why we end up back to the point as if there was no envelope and we were just hearing the tone with its natural cutoff is because the sustain knob is set where it is if I turn the sustain knob up we introduce extra tone so this is a new point in our envelope journey so what's going to happen now we're still going to spend that time going up to maximum where we hear all of the tones and we're still going to have a decay time over which we pull away from that maximum back down to our sustain level but now when we finish that journey at the end of the decay phase we're going to settle out with more than the nine harmonics we, we started with and they are settling down and now we're static and all of those extra harmonics are coming from the increased sustain knob so all of these controls are interrelated they're interacting with each other if I set sustain to maximum then the decay knob basically has nothing to do because the attack phase takes us to the, the maximum cutoff frequency as specified by the envelope amount the decay time takes us to the sustain point but if the sustain point is also the maximum cutoff frequency then we won't hear any decay phase so we're going to hear it going up but we won't hear it coming back down so it's just gone through its decay phase but it had nowhere to go the envelope had nowhere to go it's just a flat line at the top of a graph in order to introduce the next control release we need to jump over to the amplifier and have a look at the other section I, I said we'd, we'd talk about today because release is what happens when you let go of the key well at the moment when we let go of the key the sound stops and the sound stops because we have to all intents and purposes um, no release time on our amplifier in other words when we let go of the key the volume disappears within 10 milliseconds if I make the release time nice and long now so the tone is dying away but you, did you hear that dramatic drop in the uh, in the, 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 the tonal quality of the sound so what's happening there is that over the course of the release phase we descend back to our original cutoff level. So while the key is held down, we're stuck on our sustain point, which is basically letting all the frequency through. As soon as I release the key, we'll go down to this level. And briefly, there's your nine harmonics. It kind of stuck temporarily on those nine harmonics. Make the release as long as I can. And we should really see those nine harmonics come through. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine, <laughs> if I'm pushing my luck. So now we've got this really long release phase over which the sound is decaying. So that's the amplifier just letting the sound go gradually. Now let's introduce a release phase to our filter. And so we're going to go from the sustain point to the cutoff point over this period of time. Let's hear what that sounds like. All the way up, all the way up to our sustain point, and then. So now we don't jump straight to our nine harmonics. We fall back through the frequency range, attenuating from the sustain point to the cutoff point, and all the time the tone is also dying away because of the amplifier's release level. 
The other three knobs on the amplifier are pretty self-explanatory. In order to have a quick look at them, we'll just take the filter out of the equation. Back to our static tone. And there's our long release phase. So if I set a longer attack, it's going to take a long time. Uh, with the, the note is going to take a long time getting loud. See it getting louder and louder and louder and louder. We have a sustain point, which is at maximum volume. If I turn the sustain point down, volume comes down. If I now introduce a decay phase, it's going to take several seconds getting to its maximum volume. Then it's going to decay down to its sustain point and it'll hold on its sustain point until I let go of the key. When it enters its release phase and the sound dies away. So filter and amplifier are connected together intrinsically because they both have release cycles. So we need to deal with them together, really. You can't hear the filter's release phase if, you're not, uh, if you don't also have a release phase on the amplifier. But between them, you get, you get a lot of color, a lot of flexibility and control over the amplitude of the note that's getting played and how violently it appears and whether or not it descends down to a shelf and holds there and then fades away gently and also you know you've got all of this control over your filter bank with an envelope being overlaid over the top of your standard cutoff and resonance knobs really nice implementation of uh, filtering out amplifier if don't worry too much about the the values that the interface is telling you uh, i think you need to take them with a pinch of salt but the controls themselves are awesome have a bit of a play with it see what you think hope you enjoyed that in the next episode we'll deal with the low frequency oscillator lfo and that's a quirky old beast hope to see you then thanks very much for watching